The plains of Eidolon are a lovely region of planet Earth located roughly in the vicinity of current day Kazakhstan's western border with Russia. It boasts a beautiful span of coastline, scenic rolling hills, a veritable gold mine of culture, and a persisting sense of dread brought about by the presence of the nearby 30 foot killer robot amputee. Oh, and there's a thriving fishing scene. The planes as we get to explore them today are all well and good, yada yada yada, new age for Warframe, eat your heart out destiny, etc etc. To me, however, and hopefully to you, if you plan to get anything out of this video, you'll be more interested in how the planes came to be, and what exactly the hell is going on with the Phileo skyscraper. So if we wind the clock way back to when the Tenno had just finished up painting the town red and leaving the Orokin Empire decidedly decapitated, we find ourselves looking at a lone sentient sent down to Earth to sweep away the ashes of humanity. The sentient decimated city after city, leaving ruin in its wake, before eventually it wiped the gore from its optical sensors and turned its attention to the monolithic Orokin structure named the Tower of the Unum. Unum? Unum? Am I saying that right? Eh, whatever. This tower, however, was special. Inside, it contained not only an unnecessarily decadent amount of gold furniture, but also a mass of flesh and living tissue that was host to some kind of all-seeing prophetic being called, unsurprisingly, the Unum. The Unum is a mysterious figure that apparently existed well before the Old War, with no one really knowing how it came to be bound to the tower. My guess at this point is transference. I mean, it seems to be the reason for most other talking inanimate objects in this game, so it's not exactly a huge leap. The sentient's attacks failed time and time again to destroy the Unum's tower. But still, our dear sweet space mama Lotus orders all the Tenno present away from the tower out of fear for their safety. Bless. All the Tenno scurried off except for one brave soul who was the closest to the Unum. This Tenno wielded the glass warrior warframe Gara and refused to abandon the Unum to Big Red's advances. Fortunately, for some reason, the Sentient was weakened by sunlight, forcing it to hide during the day before continuing its assault after everyone had gone off to bed, like vampires or gingers. Gara sought to take advantage of this, hunting for the Sentient's hiding place during the day when it was at its weakest, but the Unum forbade her from hunting at night out of fear for her favourite follower's safety. The Unum could sustain her defences through sheer force of will and her followers' brave sacrifices in battle, but not indefinitely. Presumably more because she'd run out of followers. Now, if you remember from the Old War, the Sentients were left sterile and unable to reproduce after making the jump back through the Void to the Origin system. This means that our dastardly villain here could not commit its entire force to assaulting the Unum, as any losses would be permanent. Woo-wee, folks! Looks like we got ourselves a good old Mexican standoff! In response, the Unum devised an ingenious, if a little macabre, plan to break the stalemate by aiding Gara in her hunt. She offered to her followers some of her Temple Kuva, who then in turn fed it to the animals of the surrounding plains. These beasts then became an extension of the Unum herself, allowing her to use them as scouts to search for the sentient's lair. I mean, it sounds clever, but how the hell do you lose an enormous robotic monstrosity looming about all over the landscape? I mean, it can hardly hide behind a rock. In any case, the Unum animals found the sentient, standing sideways behind a tree or something, but in doing so alerted it to the Unum's plan. The sentient opened up one of the Unum animals, presumably in a live dissection, I hear you learn much more from those, and it found the Temple Kuva held within. As it touched the enigmatic jam, it found that it could heal itself and even procreate if it had a large enough supply. It devoured all of the Unum animals on the plains, but was left dissatisfied before turning its attention back to the source. The Sentient had realised that rather than destroying the tower, it could kill the Unum and merge with the flesh, thereby becoming able to produce more Sentients and securing the survival of its neutered race, Kinky. With the promise of salvation and victory, it flung its entire force at the Unum and her followers in a last ditch attempt to overwhelm them. Not so Kinky. Fortunately, the crafty Unum had anticipated this assault and raised great force fields from pylons placed around the plains, trapping Big Red and his army within. Gara rushed out to face the sentient, but at the gates of the plane she found a curious man-sized device placed there by the Unum. Yeah, I thought it sounded too specific as well. The sentient turned back to face her, and whilst predictably the enormous robotic killing machine beat the crap out of the poor little Tenno, Gara managed to detonate the mysterious device, destroying the sentient and severing its minion's connection to the hive mind, leaving them lobotomized. Meet Tower 1, Sentient 0. The sentient's remains scattered across the land, Gara disappeared and the Unum was left with her remaining followers to pick up the pieces and rebuild. 
The Eidolons began to wander the plains aimlessly in search of missing pieces they would never find, presumably granting the Ravage Land the name the Plains of Eidolon. So, there you go. Good triumphs over evil once again. Good now apparently encompassing massive living buildings. But hey, it's 2017, come on, let's not judge. The story goes on to show how the Ostrons settled the land and Cetus came to be, but I'll hold off on that for another time. For now, I just want to talk about a couple of questions this tale raises. Okay, first up, who or what the hell is the Unum? What kind of creature can hold back a sentient, constantly lop off bits of its body to feed its followers, and look through time like it's a magazine in a waiting room? I'd considered the possibility of Gara's operator having transferred into the tower's flesh and using the frame as her link to the outside world, but that still doesn't explain why the insulation was swapped out with sausage meat in the first place, so I'm fairly certain that's wrong. For now, we can only guess, but I'd wager she's going to be of some serious importance somewhere down the line. My other question is regarding the sentience and their connection to Kuva. It already seemed like that saucy little liquid tied everything together from transference and continuity to Cephalons and the Void but now we find out it's the missing piece the sentients need to be whole again. It looks to me that DE is setting up Kuva to be some kind of deus ex machina that everyone will end up fighting over. I mean, now we even have a breadcrumb as to where the bloody stuff comes from. I'd figured it would be distilled souls or a philosopher's stone or something equally tropey, but hey, maybe I need to amend my theory if all this time it's just been leaking out of the ham hock high rise. Hello again everybody and welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the update as much as I am. Killing lots of Eidolons, fishing lots of fish. Those of you who already read up on the lore of Plains of Eidolon will notice that I left out the tale of the wife of the land and the husband of the sea. Worry not friends, I decided to split the lore into two videos, so watch out for the other one coming soon, TM. If you'd like to chat about the lore, I'm happy to respond to comments down below, or you can join my Discord server in the description below also for a more personal brand of bullshit. The like and subscribe buttons are, as usual, they're ready to take your call. Just pick up the phone. They want to talk to you. As always, guys, I've been Luke, this has been Lawframe, and you have been awesome. Till next time, guys.